The House comes to questions for oral answer question number one in the name of Grant Robertson. Why, thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Finance. Is it correct that household debt-to-income ratio is now 165 per cent? And does he agree with Westpac senior economist Satish Ranchod's comment in response to this record high level, quote, you can't continue to grow an economy just using debt. There needs to be more to prop up activity, end quote. The Honourable Bill English. Uh, Mr Speaker, the answer to the first question, yes, and the second question, no. Uh, I would reiterate previous statements I have made. Households make their own decisions about how much debt to take on. But those households which are taking on uh, proportionately high, large amounts of debt at the moment uh, should not rely on any assumption that interest rates will stay where they are forever or that they won't increase. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Grant Robertson. Can he confirm that a household debt to income ratio of 165 per cent is higher than during the global financial crisis, has increased by 36 per cent since his government came to office, and by nearly 8 per cent in just the last year? The Honourable Bill uh, English. Mr Speaker, I think those um, numbers are probably right, but the member needs to be reminded the government doesn't decide how much money households borrow, and one of the reasons for the ongoing increase is that interest rates have continued to drop in ways that neither households or the government or economists expected would occur. But people who are borrowing large amounts of money right now uh, should not be operating on the assumption that interest rates will stay low forever. Oh, supplementary question, Brett Hudson. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Supplementary to the Minister. Does he agree with Westpac senior economist Satish Ranchard's comment, quote, it's looking like the economy will keep trucking along for the next year or so, with a range of economic indicators pointing towards continued momentum and activity? The Honourable Bill English. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, yes, I do. The, the economist who pointed out the relatively high level of Household debt also pointed out uh, that the economy is moving along pretty consistently, and figures uh, that came out in the last week or so show that the rate of growth of the New Zealand economy is among the higher growth rates in the developed world. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Grant Robertson. Why is he claiming success for the economy when house prices have risen at seven times the rate of incomes across New Zealand under his watch? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, it's not a ma so much a matter of whether the government's claiming success for the economy. Members should go out and have a look around the economy and see the confidence and investment that is going on. Uh, there has been extensive discussion of house prices and I'm keen, uh, be, will be keen to see the opposition parties support government measures, uh, both through the Resource Management Amendment Bill and further into next year, which will help deal with the planning problems that, under, that underwrite the house price increases. Supplementary, Mr Speaker. Supplementary question, Brett Hudson. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Minister, does he agree with Westpac senior economist uh, Satish Ranchard's comment, quote, strengthening, strengthening in economic conditions has been rippling through the household sector. Employment is up, with business surveys showing a 2.8 per cent increase in the number of full-time equivalent employees over the past year. Conditions in the housing and construction sectors are very strong. The Honourable Bill English. Mr Speaker, I do agree with the economist's comments. Mr. Speaker, supplementary question. Supplementary question, Grant Robertson. Why is he not being more urgent in addressing the housing, housing crisis with housing debt estimated by Treasury to be more than $215 billion dollars given 215 billion dollars given his own statement in 2012 quote high housing debt diverts money from more productive investments contributes to New Zealand's significant overall level of indebtedness and exposes taxpayers to growing demands for state assistance with housing costs the honorable bill english uh, mr speaker i do and that's why the government has invested some uh, time and energy over the last three or four years, uh, a huge amount actually, in shifting the regulatory environment 
uh, and in particular supporting the Auckland City Council who produced a unitary plan which is a very big step forward in mitigating these problems. I might just point out to the member that the cost of servicing this level of household debt is nearly 40 per cent lower today than was the cost in 2008 when he left office. So households have more debt but the cost of servicing it is lower than it used to be. Supplementary, Mr Speaker. Supplementary question, Brett Hudson. Thank you. To the Minister, how does household borrowing compare to other measures of household wealth, including bank deposits, total financial assets and net worth? The Honourable Bill English. Uh, well, Mr Speaker, at the same time as debt has been rising, and as I've said, for those who are borrowing large amounts, at the moment they're taking risks uh, household bank deposits have increased almost but not quite as fast. Uh, financial assets have increased quite significantly, around about uh, 40 per cent over the last six or seven years, and household wealth, including the family home, now exceeds $1 trillion. So yes, debt has risen, so have financial assets and overall household wealth. Supplementary question. Grant Robertson. Why does he think Satish Ranshot is stating so clearly that the economy is built on debt rather than productive growth? And could it be because he's been so complacent in terms of seeing debt pushed into unproductive housing speculation rather than raising productivity and growing and developing new businesses? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, I believe, think the economist uh, overstates the position, actually. Uh, in a growing economy, you would expect more debt. You would also expect more debt when interest rates are so low. But where we would agree with the economist is that at the margin, households are borrowing large amounts of money at very low interest rates, stretching their ability to service it, uh, taking a risk. And if that risk eventuates, I don't think there'll be much sympathy for people who borrowed too much when the risks were obvious. Speaker. Supplementary question, Grant Robertson. Isn't it correct that after eight years, the housing crisis is now so out of control that we have the lowest home ownership rates in more than 60 years, we have more New Zealanders homeless than ever, and we now have household debt to income ratios at record levels, and all of that falls at the feet of a government that has completely Order. failed on housing? The Honourable Bill English. Uh, Mr Speaker, no, that's not correct. As the member knows, as the member knows, the, at the core of our, uh, at what's going on in house prices has been two or three decades of misguided planning, which was intended to ration land and housing. And that has meant that when there's strong demand because of a strong economy and low interest rates, housing supply has not been flexible enough and that's why we're working with the councils and the parliament to change the rules so we can get a better functioning housing market. Question number two, Scott Simpson. Thank 